After blasting the two troop transports on the surface with a deck gun, Gudgeon is now on the run. The Japanese destroyer is giving chase, as we cut through the water at a speed of 20 knots. So far, it looks like we are outpacing the enemy warship. However, time will tell. This Japanese destroyer has been chasing USS Gudgeon for a few minutes now, and we are starting to really pull away. It seems like the Japanese destroyer has slowed down. Let's get another yes, range report here. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it looks like we've put a few hundred feet between us and her since the last time. She was moving quickly, and now they're reporting she is only moving at a medium speed. So at 20 knots, we will definitely be outpacing her here. The uh, torpedo situation is exactly the same as the previous episode. We have five torpedoes all in the bow torpedo tubes, and we are completely out of deck gun ammunition. We used the last of our deck gun ammo on the two troop transports uh, from the previous episode so that we attacked earlier uh, in the night. It is a pretty dark night. I don't think this destroyer can see us. She did have her searchlights on earlier, but it looks like she has shut them off since. So. I'm pretty confident Gudgeon is going to be able to get away. It looks like running from the enemy on the surface has worked out perfectly. The Japanese destroyer faded into the darkness and was not seen from again. The surface speed of these fleet boats is magnificent. Our old S-boat would have never been able to pull off that attack or escape. USS Gudgeon is now proceeding east in search of targets for her last five fish. It seems this patrol will be limited by ordnance. Well, it did not take long before Gudgeon was picked up by Japanese air patrols. Our air search radar picked up contacts right as the sun was coming up. The boat went down to 100 feet to avoid any trouble. We will stay submerged for a few hours at least. The last few days in our patrol area have been uneventful. Gudgeon was forced to submerge numerous times due to aircraft, but besides that, there was no sign of any surface ships. On February 1st, Gudgeon turned northeast. We would patrol off of Honshu one last time. Our final destination was the waters off of Tokyo. It should not be very hard to find suitable targets for our final five Mark 14 torpedoes in these highly trafficked waters. Single contact, bearing, one, seven, long range. At 0750 base time, Gudgeon picked up a lone radar contact bearing 017 degrees. Our plot shows the contact is moving southwest, pretty much on a collision course with our boat. Of course, we will establish visual contact and see if the lone vessel is worth one of our final torpedoes. We have established visual contact on the lone radar blip we have been tracking for, oh, around 30 minutes or so now. Uh, it looks like it is a lone warship. It looks like a two-stack destroyer. I have quite a few guns, at least two mounts, one on the bow and one on the stern. I really don't care to identify it. This is not something I want to waste one of our final five Mark 14s on. I'd rather engage larger ships that are worth a little bit more. So we are going to pretty much turn around. Let's slow down so we're not kicking up such a massive wake. We are pretty far away from the enemy destroyer, so hopefully she doesn't see us. That would be less than ideal, and hopefully they don't have radar. Although if we got this close, I'm assuming they do not. 
Oh, yep. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn around. We're making our way up north towards Tokyo. We still have a little ways to go, though. I was kind of surprised there's just a lone warship out here. She's still heading southwest. Hasn't broken or anything like that. We'll just keep our eyes on her. Hopefully she doesn't turn this way. That would be not good, <laughs> quite frankly. If we had a few more torpedoes, I would probably engage this thing, but let's go ahead and bring up the recognition manual and see. I have a feeling it's a destroyer that's kind of towards the back. Uh, probably like 900 tons or so. Yeah, a little frigate like this. Honestly, that looks a lot like it right there. Um, I can't really make out the funnels. The funnels may be a little skinnier, but yeah, something relatively small like uh, one of these. Not worth a torpedo, in my opinion. So we are going to break contact and continue on our merry way. We are being shot at. Holy shit. All ahead flank battle stations. Oh my god. Emergency dive. Emergency dive. Okay, damage control is man. Jesus. Talk about accurate gunnery. Alright, we're moving now. I was going nice and slow to avoid kicking up a wake, but jeez. Okay, drop down, boys. Drop down. Okay, we are dropping down like a rock now, thank goodness. Damage seems to be okay. Diesel engines damaged, we have a pump damaged. Air compressor, electric motors. Okay, reduce speed to two thirds. Jeez, I can't believe that Japanese destroyer spotted us. I guess I shouldn't underestimate uh, Japanese night optics, but still, my goodness. And their gunnery was extremely accurate right off the bat, quite terrifying. Battle stations are manned. Our damage control teams are getting to work on these few damaged components. Uh, we should be okay, though. There we go. Already Pumps are already repaired. Fantastic. Okay, Gudgeon is sitting at around 130 feet. We are rigged for silent running here. The Japanese destroyer is now starting to ping us. Let's go ahead and drop down to 200 feet. I was a little nervous to drop this deep while repairing, but all repairs are completed at this point. We can go here. We have some crew that's been knocked up just a little bit. Looks like we were hit right in the diesel engine room. Uh, <laughs> judging by the wounded crew, which just have minor scrapes and bumps, and the diesel engines were damaged, so. But, as you can see, we have 25% hull damage. Everything is under control, though. In the command room, we do have a little bit of water buildup down here, which is pretty cool, but, um, I kind of wish we would have pumped that out by now. We are dropping down nice and slowly. Let's go to the hydrophone and find our warship friend. Jeez, we have been just getting abused the past few days by these enemy warships. These things have been quite brutal in these waters. Okay, she is closing. We'll see how this goes. Okay, the enemy destroyer has started to accelerate. I believe she is starting her attack run. Let's get ready for some evasive maneuvers here. 
The enemy destroyer has dropped a handful of depth charges. However, none of them have been anywhere close to us. Most of them have been aft of the boat by a few thousand yards, to be honest. Uh, this destroyer captain is not nearly as competent as the last one we have encountered. I do believe we are going to be able to get out of here relatively easily, although time will tell. Well, it looks like I may have spoken too soon. The destroyer is coming over the top. We are now moving flank speed. We're down at 200 feet. Let's adjust down to 250 feet. Go a little deeper. And see, I'm sure the destroyer rolled. They were pinging us quite rapidly for a second. I think they definitely got a fix on us. Okay, we're dropping below the thermal layer. That's reassuring. Kind of surprised they got a beat on us. They were quite far away earlier, but yeah, I can hear them chugging above us. Not a fan of that. Nice and easy. Well, here we go. Hopefully we don't get hit. Okay, a depth charge just went off. There's a second. That one was close. But aft. I do not like how close these are. Hopefully, was that it? Rudder amidships. Okay, let's maintain this depth. We're at 250 feet. Okay, three depth charges. The patterns have been quite small. I don't think this destroyer is capable of laying the same sort of patterns that the last one was. But that was still quite scary. Thankfully, we are undamaged from the depth charges. The gunfire is what really got us pretty good there. Our destroyer friends coming back around, all ahead flank. Ahead flank. Left full rudder. It's not going to be good. Two charges just went off pretty far away. Let's reduce speed down again. Rudder amidships. There's a third. That one was pretty close. All right, all ahead flank. <laughs> Keep moving. We're not out of the woods yet. Let's see. That one was much closer than the previous two. I think we're actually going to be all right here. That one was far. Interesting. So far, we have successfully evaded every pattern. However, we have not had a good opportunity to shake this Japanese destroyer just yet. This guy may be a little bit more competent than I, uh, I gave him credit for at first.
Okay, being pinged quite rapidly once again. Let's drop down to 300. We need to just go deeper. Uh, 250 is not cutting it. She has stopped pinging. She's probably rolling. That is fine. We're on a pretty good course. It looks like she's going to pass aft of the boat. Let's check. Yeah, there she is. We hear her dropping. Not yet. It is possible that the shore already rolled her charges, but yeah, she's slowing down. She definitely rolled. Oh, now we wait and see how close they are. We are moving at flank speed. Hopefully we're not going too deep. A point where I regret this. The boat is damaged, so I am quite nervous about this. We should be all right though. Okay, the destroyer is right over the top of us. She is accelerating. We are turning hard now. We are at our 300 foot depth. Let's go deeper. Yes, 350 feet, please. Um, actually, not that deep. Like 325, please. And let's see, I'm sure the destroyer is rolling now. We are turning hard to port. Let's adjust that slightly. Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Explosions behind us. Let's go. Oh, jeez, that was close. Keep moving. Keep moving. We're moving at seven knots. They're all exploding aft of us, but still, that is... Far too close for comfort. This guy is extremely difficult to shake. We are even below the thermal layer. Okay. That may have been the last pattern for... Oh, there's more. Pretty far. Rudder and midships. Not a fan of this at all. We're going to try to maintain this depth. I don't want to go much deeper if I can help it, honestly. Looks like that was it for a while. Reduce speed. Let's lay low again. After around an hour and a half of continuous depth charging, the enemy skipper finally gave up, and the destroyer returned to their southwestern course. Gudgeon would turn back on her original heading and proceed to break contact with the enemy. Two hours have passed since Gudgeon and the destroyer parted ways. At 11.20, the order was given to come up to periscope depth. I conducted a thorough search of the surface with the attack periscope. The goal of this was to ensure our hunter was no longer anywhere near us. The coast was clear. USS Gudgeon hit the surface once again. Her destination, Tokyo. Well, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all 
on the next one.